الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنة ليوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back brothers and uh, uh, I don't know why the delay was there but there's some issue at the, at the office but الحمد لله uh, let's continue we're talking about salah and and we looked at um, how to perform salah we looked at these uh, initial aspects of it the qiyam and we said rasulullah said sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallu kama raitumuni usalli so pray as you have seen me praying and that's the most critical aspect right so we need to we need to make our salah exactly as how, as how rasulullah guided us otherwise it is not acceptable barakallahu fikum because he's our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not uh, uh, the imams or the madahibs or anyone else he is the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam naam taib um, so we talked about the position of qiyam uh, we looked at uh, takbirat al ihram um, istiada naam and how to place the hands on the chest uh, that's a stronger hadith not on the navel or the belly button or below the belly button so it's either the the picture on the left or, or the picture on the right Uh, we do not combine the two barakallahu fikum so say the one on the left or the one on the right and we said both these positions are wrong it is not proven from the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam um we said rasulullah sallam should recite surah fatiha and we said the eyes should be open and and looking at the place of uh, prostration sajda now and we discussed ruku and uh, we talked about the correct method of making ruku and what to recite in ruku we talked about rafia dain raising of the hands uh, to the level of the shoulders or the level of the ear lobes not to hold the ears not to put the four fingers into the ears all this is not proven from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we said he would stand up from ruku saying sami allahu liman hamida and rabbana wa lakal hamd we talked about all of this last week i'm just doing a quick recap uh, we also discussed sujood or sajda and we said we have to prostrate on seven bones naam the first being the forehead and the nose and rasulullah actually pointed out these with his hands to make it very clear to the sahaba radhiyallahu anhum and then also to us indirectly so the forehead and the nose is one the two palms are two and three the two knees are four and five and the two toes or rather the toes of the two feet are six and seven right and we talked about this as well these should be the seven parts touching the ground and those are the correct positions for sajda and those are the wrong positions for sajda uh, in fact rasulullah prohibited those kind of positions and we talked about the hadith last week he told the sahabi to go and pray you have not prayed to go and pray you have not prayed three times because the sahabi was doing uh, this kind of a prostration and he was rushing through it he was rushing through it and we said we should sit between the two prostrations the jalsa position right uh, sit and you say rabbik rabbik firli rabbik firli or there are other supplications which you can say so don't bang go into it again and again ma'am Right. So when you sit for sajda now, that's where we stopped last week. So when you sit for sajda, there are three proven positions of make of, of, of the way you sit, right? One of them is only in the last tashahud. For the third three rakat salah and the four rakat salah, we come into that. The other two, right, is is what you sit between the sajda. so as as shown here yeah and the position here on the, on the left this picture here so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam between the two prostrations in the position of jalsa as they call it yeah he would sit like this either like this or like this both are okay inshallah both are okay so with his feet propped up with his back side resting on his knee, on his heels both his heels and the feet are together or the other position here right with with the right feet uh, sorry right foot propped up toes facing the qibla and and the left foot on the floor and the back side resting on the left foot on the left foot right the one on on the um, uh, left is called iqa and the one on the right is called ittirash so these are the two positions which are allowed and proven from the sunnah you can do either of these between the prostrations between the prostrations so either ittirash or iqa both are okay inshallah you can either do this or that or you stick to one it's up to you but try to mix both of them so you're trying to uh, complete the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so again the two feet propped up the one here on the left 
This is Iqa. Okay. And this way is Iftirash. So you're sitting with the right foot for, uh, propped up towards facing the Qibla and the backside is on the left foot. The backside is on the left foot. That is Iftirash. Barak Lafikum. These are the two proven positions from the Sunnah in Jalsa between the two prostrations. Taib. And then he would make Sajda again, the second prostration. Again in the Sajda you would recite uh, Subhana Rabbil Ala. Ya yeah, Allah, that is Allah is, is, is the most exalted, uh, glorified, and, and the most perfect. He is the most, he is, he is, and, and so on and so forth. You recite other applications also proven. And like, like we said, Hisnul Muslim is a good book to get for these um, proven, authentic uh, supplications, inshallah. So, Subhana Rabbi Allah is glory, glory to the Rabb Most High, or Allah is the most exalted and the most perfect and free from any imperfection. That is what Subhan. Subhana means basically, ma'am. Taib. So once this is done, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, before that, sorry. Uh, so, okay. So then he would stand up and do the same. So this is one rakat, right? This is one rakat. What what we talked about so far is 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 one rakat, ma'am. He would then stand up, all right, and do the second rakat, the same way, the same way, all right, the same way. Uh, can you do Rafi Adin? Rafi Adin is proven from Rasulullah Sassam in the third rakat, not the second rakat. In the third rakat of, of a four rakat salah or the Maghrib three rakat salah. The third rakat, when he would get up, he would do Rafi Adin. Uh, but otherwise, you can still do it even in the second rakat, but it is not the sunnah. Baraklafikum. He would do it in the first, of course, and then in the uh, standing up for the third rakat in, in the Maghrib or the uh, Dhuhr, uh, Isha, and so on. Now, and you would do the same thing as we talked about so far. Surah Fatiha, another surah for the second rakat. Type. And then you would sit again. Uh, sorry, go into Ruku, go into Sajda. And sit between the two sujood. And then go into the second Sajda. And then sit now. Now when you sit, right? When you sit for the first Tashahud. This is called the first Tashahud. Barak Lafikum. And again, these two positions are proven. Iqa and Iftirash. Both are proven in the first Tashahud. And the first tashahud you will recite. Most of you know this, but if you do not know, please memorize it. It's very important. at tahiyatulillahi and so on and so forth till the end. Right? This is the first tashahud. Assuming you're praying Maghrib or Dhuhr or, uh, or Isha, uh, Asr, yeah? First tashahud. Taib. And the, now the most important question, right? How do, how did, how do you, uh, or what do you do with your fingers? The left hand is resting on the left knee in tashahud. The left hand is resting on the left knee in tashahud, right? Slightly spread out. On the knee or slightly above on the initial part of the thigh is also okay, inshallah. But the sunnah is the knee. Uh, the right hand is on the right knee, all right? And these are the two proven positions for the fingers of the right hand in tashahud, right? It doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed. This is always the right hand. Baraklafikum. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do one of these two positions. So you can do either one of them, or you know both of them combining. Sometimes this, sometimes that. Both are okay, inshallah. And this position also applies for the last tashahud. All right. So he would either on the picture on the left, he would either make a kind of a ring, a O O O figure, with his middle finger and his thumb, pointing the forefinger, and the forefinger is pointing towards the qibla. The forefinger is pointing towards the Qibla. Taib. Or he would clasp his fingers together like the pigeon on the right. He would make a fist, like a clenched fist. Again, the forefinger is pointing towards the Qibla. Both are okay, inshallah. Both are proven from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he would move with his finger as he recited the Tashahud and all the other adhkar. Some scholars say you move it only during the Tashahud some scholars say you move it only when you say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Huh? Uh, but the correct opinion, inshallah, is that he would move it right through from the starting of Atayat till the end. So, assuming you're in the first Tashahud, you, you will recite Atayat. But let's say you're sitting for the last Tashahud in Maghrib or Ghohar, uh, Asar or, or uh, Isha. Huh? The last Tashahud, you will recite supplications after the Tashahud, tashahud right? So, right through all of those supplications. He would move his finger up and down. He would move his finger up and down. Taib. So, 
these movements have to be uh, short, uh, yani not not very big movements. Because if you make it, move it very big, the finger is now pointing upwards or the finger is now pointing downwards towards the ground. But the hadith says the finger would point towards the qibla. So you keep it pointed towards the qibla, you make short up and down movements, very short. A few millimeters up and a few millimeters down. You get the point? So you move it up and down, right through, right through. This is the correct, inshallah, opinion. Wallahu alam. Taib. So this is how you would place your fingers for the right on the right hand for tashahud. The first and the last tashahud. Clear? Wada type. Now, so you get unless you're praying Maghrib or Dhuhr or Asr or Isha. So the three rakat salah or the four rakat salah, excluding Fajr. Fajr is only two rakat. So you only one tashahud. And then one tashahud, you will sit Ika or sorry, Iftirash. Iftirash. Khalas. That's it. Right? See, okay, the point I forgot to mention is Ika, this position of Ika with the two feet propped up and, and resting and your backside resting on the heels is only for the jalsa position between the two prostrations. Between the two prostrations, right? You do not sit like this in tashahud. This is not from the sunnah. It is only for the jalsa between the two prostrations. In tashahud, you can sit iftirash, the one on the right. Okay? Between the two prostrations, you can do either. You can do this or this. But for tashahud, only the one on the right, iftirash. Clear? This is the, in, in, in Fajr, in the first tashahud, of the four rakat or three rakat. For the last tashahud of the of the Maghrib or Dhuhr, Asr, Isha, three rakat and four rakat, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would sit in tawarruk, tawarruk position, what is called tawarruk, tawarruk. All right. Some people think it is only for the ladies. No. Because especially in the subcontinent, they think that only ladies have to sit like that. No. It is for the men and the ladies. All right. The brothers and the sisters. Again, this is in the last tashahud of the three rakat salah or the four rakat salah. Right? Uh, it's called mutawarrik or tawarruk position. And the way you're sitting, the one who's sitting is called mutawarrik. Now, how is this done? Uh, you will put, you will take your right foot or right leg rather. Sorry, left leg, left leg, sorry, left leg. Left leg under your right foot. Like, like shown here. I have a better picture on the next slide, I think. Yes. yes. Okay. So let me explain this and then I'll go back. So the right leg is under, sorry, the left leg again, sorry. Apologies. Left leg is under the right leg. Okay. And, and, and the foot is like this, as you can see here. The foot is like this. Or this way. Okay. And the right foot is propped up as you did in, in the first tashahun. And your backside now is resting on the ground. In the first tashahud, it was resting on the left foot. In, in the in the tawarrak position or the mutawar, mutawarrikan, it is resting on the ground, the backside. So this is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would sit in, in uh, the last tashahud of the three rakat or the four rakat salah. Barakallahu fikum, clear. This is called the mutawarrikan position or sitting in tawarruk. And the, and, the tash, and the movement of the finger is the same. Either make an O with the forefinger, sorry, with the middle finger and the thumb and move your forefinger or clench your fingers together like a fist and move your forefinger pointing towards the Qibla. I hope this is clear, this position, inshallah. For brothers who are not used to it, initially you may find it a bit, uh, yeah, some, some, may, some may find it a bit difficult, but inshallah you will get it, don't worry, inshallah. It's, it's easy. So this is done, like we said, in the final tashahud. Of, of any salah which has two, 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 two tashahuds. So Maghrib, Dhuhr, Asar, Isha, yeah, except the Fajr. Fajr, you will not sit like this. Fajr, there's only one tashahud, you will sit iftirash. You will sit iftirash. You will sit like this. This is iftirash. Okay. Barak and, and the fingers are always like this. Wada, clear. Type. So Fajr, Fajr Salah, Fard, or any two rakat you're praying, okay, even Nafil, for example, Iftirash is how you sit in Tashahud. But Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, huh, you will sit Mutawarrikan or the Tawarruk position, which is what we explained in this picture. This is how you would sit.
okay the left 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 leg will go under your right leg left leg will go under your right leg as shown there the right foot is propped up toes facing the qibla and your backside is resting on the ground on the ground wada thai so assuming you're doing two rakat or like we kind of left off last time you will stand up and make qiyam again for the for the for the uh, sorry second rakat and then first tashahud last tashahud and then eventually you will do taslim right now the last tashahud what will you recite you will recite at-tayatu again as as you did in the first tashahud right and after that you would res- you would set salams and salaam on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what they call it um, um, they call it also darud ibrahim for example yeah allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad and so on and so forth allahumma barik ala muhammad yeah and so on and so forth yeah so you will recite this in the last tashahud for the maghrib or the four rakat uh, dhuhr asr maghrib sorry isha you will recite this durood or this supplication after uh, at-tayat and then the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to recite maybe most of you know this dua a very very important dua if you do not know it please 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 memorize it it is mentioned in your book as well allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-jahannam wa min adhab al-qabr wa min fitnat al-mahya wal mamat wa min fitnat al-masih ad-dajjal very very important this is one of the supplications which will inshallah protect us from the false uh, masaya or or the antichrist as they call them at dajjal right and rasulullah the sahaba radhiyallahu anhum in the hadith they would say rasulullah would teach us this dua as if he was teaching us the quran it's a dua but he would teach us this as if he would recite uh, he was teaching us the quran and he would never miss this there is one more verse of this dua reciting this dua there is another hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that once you recite this dua in tashahud and after this dua whatever dua you recite and supplications you recite after that until taslim taslim is assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah yeah until taslim whatever supplications you recite inshallah will be accepted inshallah will be accepted tab i forgot to mention one point here sorry my mind was kind of get got lost today because of the delay and calling up the office multiple times apologize for that it kind of disturbs my thought process anyway alhamdulillah la kulli hal in this position right tashahud first or the second both you're looking at the forefinger now you're not looking at the place of prostration your eyes are fixed at the finger which is moving up and down the forefinger this is the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now you're no longer looking at the place of prostration but rather you're looking at the forefinger which is making quick brief up and down movements still pointing towards the qibla clear so you look at the finger here type yeah okay okay let me go back here so so this dua is important brothers please please memorize it uh, because it it protects you from the jal by the will of allah and also any supplication you recite after that until the taslim is inshallah accepted by another hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the end of the salah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would make taslim taslim is basically assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and saying assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa rahmatullah moving uh, to the right and to the left moving your head completely completely uh, this is very important many brothers make this mistake they make a short you know like 30 degrees you know you have the compass so not compass what do you call it protractor protractor yeah geometry box yeah protractor uh, if you put, take the zero from the 90 they go like 30 degrees to the right and 30 degrees to the left this is wrong this is not how rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made the scheme he would move his head completely completely until the cheek is in line with the body and 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 the uh, head is you know almost touching the shoulder completely to the right and then completely to the left and he would move it to the right he would say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and when he would move it to the left he would again say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah but is important but some people also sometimes exaggerate i have seen this in some masajids some brothers they kind of look backwards they overdo it they move it completely to the right and they are now looking behind who is behind them no this is wrong as well you move it to the right and move it to the left so don't don't exaggerate do not also what do you call it under and i don't know underdo it or overdo it yeah so it has to be followed done as per the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tay barakallahu fikum and you will have this very important point calmness and khushu in performing salah remember the hadith we talked about last week 
where the Sahabi was moving uh, through his Salah very quickly without any calmness and khushu. And Rasulullah told him, go back and pray. You have not prayed. Go back and pray. You have not prayed. Now, type. So this is basically Salah. Uh, hope this is clear, inshallah. Um, I wanted to start off with the Arkan as well, but, you know, because we started late. Uh, maybe I'll stop. No, we have like five minutes and look or, or eight, ten minutes and look at any questions you may have. Next week, we still have two weeks, inshallah. So next week, I'll finish the Arkan, Wajibat, inshallah, Bismillah, and the Sunnan. And the following week, we can have Q&A for the whole course, right, from the pillars of Islam till, till what we completed, alhamdulillah. And then the following week after that, the third week, will have will be your final exam, inshallah. And the final exam will be like the first exam. Uh, it will be online, but you will do it in class. In class, uh, like 45 minutes, you will have the link and you will access it, inshallah. Taib, let me see if you have any questions. You can also raise your hands, the brothers. Okay, do we need to move the finger? Yes, we, we need to move the finger up and down. We talked about this. Uh, where to see in between the sajda? Yes, so we said when you're sitting for tashahud, yeah, you're looking at the forefinger. But between the two prostrations, when you sit in the jalsa position, right, you're looking still at the place of prostration. You're looking at the place of prostration. Like we said, you always look at the place of prostration, except when you're moving your forefinger, you're looking at the finger in tashahud. And in taslim, you look to the right and you look to the left. That's it. But otherwise, always in ruku, in qiyam, in jalsa, you're looking at the place of prostration. Baraklafikum taib. Between taslim, do we need to stop? Between Taslim, okay, this is a good point. Uh, between Taslim, do we need to stop in the middle? See, the correct way, brothers, is that Rasulullah would move his head to the right and then to the left. Some brothers, we have seen the massages, they make some dance movements with their head. Uh, yani it's, they're like break dancing. I don't know, subhanAllah, yani, Allah understand. Huh? They move it to the right, they do. They nod it up and down, they bring it to the middle, nod it up and down, and they move to the left, nod up and down. Yeah, what are you doing? SubhanAllah, ya Sheikh, what are you doing? Wallahi ajeeb, yani. You just move normally how you look to someone. Let's say, let's say somebody calls you from the right side. You will turn your head and look to the right. That's it. That's it. simple and easy. Don't start doing break dancing and what dancing and I don't know, ballet dancing. This is salah. Yeah. So this is important. So some brothers do this and come back as if they are confirming something, as if they are nodding their head and acknowledging. What are you acknowledging? So this is wrong. And you do not you do not stop between the, the movements. You just move to the right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And then I can move, move completely to the left, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Barakla fikum, Zakmullah khairan. Tarai, brother Aharif Sharif, you have a question? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullah. The sitting position which you have mentioned is a sunnah. And uh, what if we, uh, because many of them we still follow the same, like uh, the first, you say that uh, the, the way which we are sitting, uh, one, uh, yeah, the, uh, not this way, the other way with first Tashahud. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This one, the right side which you have said. Yes. Uh, if, if you sit in the same position uh, in the last Rakat, uh, uh, I mean, okay. Is okay, it? yeah, see, so see, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, I get your point, I get your question. So, uh, like we said, this is the Sunnah position, right? It is not, uh, because when it, with the next, next class, inshallah, next week, we look at the pillars of Salah, the Wajibat, and, and the Sunnan. So it's not a pillar of Salah, okay, sitting in that manner. But we want to do that because the Sunnah of our Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the one who taught us how to pray. So even if you can't get it, like we said, sometimes initially it may be a bit difficult, but practice it. Don't worry, it'll happen. It'll come. Don't worry, you will, you will not fall off. You will not fall down. It's perfectly easy. Uh, inshallah, it will come. It's the intention. So once we have the intention to follow the Sunnah, Allah will, inshallah, make it easy. Right? But otherwise, even if you sit like this, like like if the rush in the last tashahud, your salah is valid. Don't worry, your salah is valid, inshallah. But like we said, we want to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakla fiqh, wallahu ala. Taib, uh, brother uh, Abu Bara, Muhammad Mohi. Naam. You need to unmute your uh, mic, uh, brother Muhammad. I think you're speaking with the mic muted. Okay, I know maybe we lost him. He's okay. I have another question here. Imam in Ruku, how can we join Salah? Okay, 
brother aftab uh, just hold on to this question we'll do this in the q and a because i want to finish up the sala aspect exactly uh, your question is valid i'm not uh, ignoring it but i want to do it towards the end we will do all kinds of miscellaneous questions inshallah so please write it down and remind me either next week if you have time or the following week inshallah barakallah fik brother aftab taib um kindly clarify again the recitation of surah fatiha by imam yeah so okay mm, okay this is again is taib uh, okay let me answer both these questions together then brother aftabs and uh, brother ismail taib so we said uh, recitation of surah fatiha is 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 in arkan is from the pillars and we'll see this next week inshallah and rasulullah said sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadith whoever uh, leaves uh, fatiha in salah his salah is batil it's, it's not accepted right so and we have various other hadith of of the sahaba uh, reciting surah fatiha and also rasulullah reciting surah fatiha in salah now the correct opinion inshallah is that either it is zahir or batini so loud salah or the silent salah in both the prayers surah fatiha has to be recited right if you bring alone it's not a big deal it's easy right uh, but if you are praying um, behind the imam naam so like we said you have two options and this is this is the way of the sahaba radhiyallahu anhum abu huraira anas bin malik and so on and so forth based on their ahadith there are two two ways you can do it the imam will recite surah fatiha right and he will pause sometime the sunnah is to pause between each ayat this how rasulullah would do it so alhamdulillah rabbil alamin he would pause ar rahman ar rahim pause yeah so if the pause is sufficient and you know you know the imam is going to pause you recite that ayat in the pause clear wada this is one way the other way is you wait till he finishes the fatiha completely i mean after that you recite your fatiha but now you will miss his recitation of the second uh, surah that, that's okay because now you're trying to fulfill a pillar and listening to the recitation is sunnah you're trying to fulfill the pillar that that takes precedence that takes priority so that's the second way clear wada I hope that's clear. Uh, the brother Aftab asked Imam and Ruku, how can we join Salah? Maybe miss Surah Fatiha. Okay, so Rasulullah said in the Hadith is very clear, Wade Sahih, that when you enter, if you come late and you find the Imam and Ruku, uh, and you can catch him before he gets up, you have got the rakat. This is one opinion. The other opinion of scholars, they say no, because we missed Fatiha, which is a pillar, you have to repeat it. But inshallah, this is a stronger opinion because we have a clear Hadith of Rasulullah, and we have another Hadith wherein. Uh, Rasulullah Sallam was praying. He was the Imam. And uh, okay, brothers, this is the last question I can do. I'm sorry. Uh, please write down your questions and remind me next week. I'm, I apologize because we started late and I'm out of time. So Rasulullah Sallam was in a, was in the Imam. He was reciting. And one of the miracles which Allah gave to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was that in Salah he could see behind him. In Salah he could see behind him as well. So after Salah, because as he was praying, uh, one Sahabi came in late. and rasulullah went into ruku this sahabi from the door of the masjid entrance of the masjid he went into ruku to catch the rakat and he started walking towards the saf towards the row so the row was in the, in the front but he went into ruku to try to get the rakat and he started walking in ruku to catch the saf to to get uh, and join the saf after salah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told the sahabi next time do not do it uh, sorry he said do not repeat that manner next time that's it he didn't ask him to repeat that rakat you get the point he didn't ask him to... so what he meant was don't you know get in ruku and walk you come calmly peacefully and join the saf if you make, if you make the rakat fine otherwise make it up that's what he meant because he didn't ask the sahabi to make up one rakat because this is the deen rasulullah if this was a problem in the deen he would have told the sahabi make up the rakat which which you uh, lost because you missed fatiha but he didn't say that and the other hadith they said if you if you catch the imam in ruku you got the rakat So combining these hadith, a hadith that scholars say, inshallah you got the rakat. Wallahu a'lam. Was it clear? I'm sorry, brothers. I I cannot. Uh, what's the time? Uh, yeah, I'm beyond time. So apologize. Uh, inshallah next week we'll 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 fi- we'll finish and also look at your questions. Or the following week definitely is completely Q and A. So we'll take all your questions uh, with with uh, pleasure. Inshallah. Barakallahu fikum. Uh, we need to stop for now. Okay. What are the questions? Barakallahu feekum. I will see you inshallah in the next week. Um, 
and we'll cover Arkan, Vajapat, and Sunan, and also Q and A if possible, as well as the following following week is Q and A, and the third week is your final exam. Inshallah, Barakallahu fikum. Zakmulla khairan. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdika. Shabban la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tuubilek. Wa khurdaman anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.